All right, here we go. A Gantt revolver. Old school, baby. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> well then. <laughs> See where it's at on this plate back here. <laughs> Not. <laughs> well guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we got a really cool showcase for you. This is an old school Nagant revolver uh, made in 1944. Now, uh, <laughs> they're not terribly accurate. Um, they sort of get a reputation as being minute of kneeling prisoner. We won't go there, okay, but uh, these revolvers are pretty freaking neat because they are very unique in that it's, it's really one of the only uh, gas seal revolvers, look at that, extraction <laughs> that there is, okay? They're very unique design. Uh, these were invented by Leanne Nagant uh, around 1895, and a lot of folks associate the name Nagant with another popular uh, rifle which is the M9130 and the M91 series of rifles uh, that was a, a combination effort between a couple of engineers but a lot of people don't know that he also designed a gas seal revolver now I am trying to get that cartridge out and it is stuck in there well we're gonna have to play around with that I may have to grab another rod to extract these you can see that they're pretty crude guns okay but they were mass produced, and uh, we'll get these cartridges out. You can see here the, uh, the way that you actually extract these is by pulling, <laughs> pulling this rod out, rotating it over, and you have to manually extract each cartridge, which these are stuck in the chamber. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know if maybe that one cylinder's just tight. Let's look again here on another, another cylinder. There we go. Okay, it's a gas seal revolver. So one of the interesting aspects is it is a special combination of both ammunition as well as the design of the gun. Uh, the cylinder cams forward, okay, and in combination with this special ammunition, which this is surplus uh, gas seal ammunition, it goes forward and when the cartridge expands, it forms a gas seal. And the idea is that it was supposed to give sort of a boost in velocity, okay, which is pretty cool. But it's one of, also one of the most unique revolvers in that this is one of the only revolvers that can be effectively suppressed when you use the original service ammunition. Now you can see, obviously, really, really slow to reload. Uh, you're not going to shoot a three-gun competition with uh, this gun, okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to grab a longer rod to get these out of here with. Uh, so it wasn't really fast to reload. But it was a mass-produced revolver that at the time it served their needs well, okay? Uh, this particular one is an officer's model, which is a double and single action, okay? And the double action on this thing is like a bazillion pounds, right? I mean, it's super, super heavy. But you can see the camming action of the cylinder, okay? When you, when you pull the hammer back, you can watch that cylinder move forward and seal, okay? So that's one of the most unique aspects of this gun. And... Uh, you know, they were in use in World War I, World War II, uh, obviously from 1895 on to the early 30s. Uh, these started getting replaced by the Tokarev pistol, the TT-33, uh, and everything like that. Uh, but as time went on, they, they still, you know, were obviously using these pistols, okay, even through World War II, and then even beyond. Uh, a lot of railroad service employees, a lot of security guards, we're using these pistols all the way up through like as late as like 2005 before they were officially completely retired out of uh, Russian service across all different aspects. But, you know, it, it's just neat. We're not going to shoot this one a ton, but I just wanted to show you this pistol. So you got a, a side gate right here that swings down. Now, the way you're supposed to be able to unload it is with the rod here, but it's not pushing some of these cartridges out. Uh, they're just really sticky. I do have a uh, cleaning rod here. I'm just going to go ahead and extract these cartridges here. Wow. <laughs> you definitely don't want to be a... Uh... <laughs> you don't want to be on the front lines with this thing. I mean, I would imagine that... Uh... 
probably would not have a very, a very good time. Um, yeah, I think a, a TT33 pistol, uh, you know, you're talking um, 7.62 by 25, Tokarev, look at that sticky extraction on those. But you also see that this round blows out considerably, okay, compared to the taper that is on the unfired round. Uh, it is a considerable blowout of the cartridge, and that causes it to be sticky. And I would imagine that when you combine that fact with, you know, really bad conditions out in a war, right? You know, these things getting dirty and everything. This probably was not a fun gun to use uh, as a soldier. <laughs> um, yeah, not fun. Let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's all of our rounds. Technically, okay, you should be able to use this rod to extract the cartridges, but we saw that we had to use an additional rod to assist us in that. And these things did blow out quite a bit. Uh, these guns never have been really known for their accuracy. Uh, they're not very accurate pistols at all. Um, I imagine, you know, if I got real close, I took out that one target there. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, like I say, the reputation of these guns, let's just say they're used at close range. Okay, and uh, this is a rumor. It could be an unsub unsubstantiated rumor, but one really interesting rumor floating around about these guns is that the KGB, after the war, uh, used quite a bit of these and outfitted them with uh, suppressors. Cut the barrels down and put suppressors on them. And, you know, they weren't very accurate, but they were quiet. You know, because the velocity on this cartridge is super, super low. It's like a 700 feet per second cartridge. And uh, the bore diameter on this thing is about a 312, 314. So it's like a 30 cal bore with a little bitty lightweight gas seal uh, peel. It is a solid that comes out of this cartridge. And that solid, I want to say it's only like 80 grains. Uh, so the performance of this cartridge, you could put it on par with like a 32 short or 32 long, somewhere in that ballpark. In fact, if you notice the sticky extraction that we have with these cartridges, if you wanted to shoot one of these guns and you didn't want to worry about the sticky extraction like we have on the gas seal ammo, you can actually, you know, take 32 H&R Magnum or 32 H&R uh, cases and cut them down to whatever length you want and load them. I've actually shot 32 out of this gun and it will function, it will work, uh, it is, you know, fairly good. Accuracy, of course, has never really been there on these things, but the, the cartridges will extract beautifully. Okay, so if, if that's one of the things you're thinking about, uh, don't think that they're all like this, but just about every Nagant pistol I've ever shot has that sticky extraction. You'll see a shot of these cases. They, they blow out really nasty. All right, so I'm gonna take a few more shots. It looks like the gun is shooting uh, considerably high and to the left, like a long way. So I'm gonna try again here. We got seven shots, and I'm not gonna shoot this gun a ton, but I just wanna kinda of show it off and do a little history lesson on it, cause it is a really cool gun, and they were mass produced like mad. All right, so I'll tell you what, just to demonstrate how quiet this gun really can be. Now, you know, when it's ringing out here, it, it's got a little bit of noise to it. Now, granted, with a suppressor, this thing would be stupid quiet, but I'm gonna shoot one down in the dirt right in front of me here. I just want you to hear that if that bullet doesn't have a chance to really make a lot of noise, listen how, mu how much quieter this is right here. I'm just gonna shoot it down in the dirt in front of me. See, it's, it's, it's not as loud as, you know, as it really could be. All right, let's see if we can take out our popper here. I'm gonna aim kind of low. And the trigger on this thing, even in single action, is super, super stiff. All right, let me try and make sure I'm pulling that trigger straight back. There we go. All right, I think I know where to aim. Okay. All right, not bad. Well, I stacked two right there, that's not too bad. So maybe this gun has an unwarranted reputation. Maybe we can, we can agree to disagree there, but uh, 
I will say this. Okay, we, we've got all fired cases in here, okay? Just double check. Yeah, every, every, every case went off. The double action on this thing is atrocious. Now, I'm not even going to attempt to shoot this sucker in double action because I don't know what they were feeding those Russians back then. But you had to have a pair of dang bear mitts to get that cylinder to go forward and to, to cock the hammer with the double action. Yeah, <laughs> that double action is probably about 12 pounds. It's, it's heavy. The single action on this uh, particular pistol, I am going to go ahead and dry fire it just because we, we do have spent cartridges in here. It's not going to be a problem. Uh, the dry fire, or the um, single action on this gun, probably five pounds, about a five pound single action. So they had two ba uh, basic models of this particular revolver. One was an NCO's uh, revolver, soldier's model, and they had officer's model. The officer's models were double action, single action, okay? Double action mode, single action mode, okay? So they had those. Uh, but the soldiers' models were single action only, okay? And that was really intended more because it was just cheaper to produce, cheaper to make, and they could just hand them out like candy to everybody. So it wasn't uncommon for a lot of troops to have these things tucked in their belt just because it was a cheap gun to issue. And it was a good stopgap for them if they didn't have Tokarev pistols to hand out to everybody. Everybody wanted the Tokarev, obviously. You know, good, powerful cartridge, auto loader. Uh, man, the Tokarev pistol was a fantastic handgun, okay, and uh, it, it's great, right? But they didn't have them for everybody, okay, so if you got stuck with this, well, you know, it, I guess in their mind it was better than not having nothing at all, you know, so let me see if I can get these cartridges out here. Boy, yeah, I would not want to carry this thing into combat. Now, I wouldn't want to carry it in combat, but I will say this. If you had a, a bunch of them in a sack or something, you could just do a New York reload, you know? I could, uh, you see that as being the case. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get these out of here. I think you see what's going on, and then we're gonna shoot a few more cylinders out of it. All right, we've got some original issue ammunition. That's what we're shooting. So this stuff is highly corrosive, but it's, it's kind of cool to see that after all this time, it's still functional ammunition. So these guns are really cool to get out and play with. I mean, it's not like an ideal range toy, but it's just a cool piece of history. And that's why I wanted to show it off because there's not a ton of videos about these things out there. And who knows, maybe we'll suppress one of these. So that's kind of what this is segueing into. All right, I know some people are gonna hate me for chopping up one of these, but guys, these guns were mass produced like crazy. This is original issue ammunition. You can see that it's, uh, it's packaged in a 14 shot package. Uh, that's gonna be really common for Comblock and Russian uh, type calibers. They're always gonna come packaged in a number of cartridges that is easy to issue, right? So if you're a guy with an Agant revolver, you're going through getting your you know, weapons supplied to you in the war, they hand you the gun, good luck, pal. Here's the thing of ammo. Seven shots to put in the gun, seven shots to put in, uh, in your, uh, in your uh, holster, okay? And that's it, there you go. There's your gun, there's your ammo, go. Go do whatever you're gonna do. So that, that made supply a lot easier. You notice that 7.62 by 25 Tokarev ammunition usually comes in a 72 round pouch. That's because the drums hold 72 rounds. So that's just kind of an interesting feature there. And you can see it's packaged quite nicely. Okay, you got a piece of uh, paper there that separates the cartridges, keeps them from getting corroded. And uh, gosh, for the age of this ammunition being, you know, from the late 40s, 50s, it's in very, very good shape, and it all appears to be, you know, uh, consistently firing. All right, and then the, to load it, obviously, you've just got a little gate right here that swings down. All right, you swing the little gate down, and you rotate the cylinder, and you load them one at a time. I, you know, <laughs> I can probably think of a lot more things I'd rather be armed with than this if I was in World War II. I wouldn't want to go up against uh, guys in World War II armed with this. But the thing is, you got your rifle. Maybe you don't have a submachine gun. You know, maybe you're not lucky enough to be issued a uh, PPSH. If they're right on top of you and this is all you got, it definitely beats throwing a rock. Okay, I don't know. If these, these cartridges are all fired, this thing might be a, a projectile in its own. I, I think I'd be throwing this gun before I'd be trying to reload it in the trenches, right? I think I'd find another gun, 
okay? <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm gonna try to take my time. The trigger on this thing is pretty dang stiff and rough, but I've, you know, I've, I shot a couple of shots on the plate there. Let's see if I can shoot a few more. We're just trying to have a little fun with this thing. I think that was seven. Not bad once I know where the sights are at. I mean, that's a pretty good little group there. So maybe I need to rescind my previous statement about the Nagant not being accurate. It's, it's just fairly accurate, it's combat accurate. I, I don't think I would wanna, um, I don't think I'd, I'd wanna try to get in some kind of shooting match with somebody with this thing, but uh, all in all, not bad. Okay, guys. Seven more shots out of this thing. I think y'all get the idea. I don't want to bore y'all. I know this gun isn't super exciting compared to some of the other stuff that we review, but or show off, whatever, but um, it's just a really cool revolver that you don't really get to see every day, and I don't feel like these things have been very well documented, and there's so many of them out there. I remember, like, back in the day, you used to be able to score these things for, like, $49. I mean, you could buy them for next to nothing. You know, they do have their shortcomings and they're not perfect, but it is a cool, interesting part of military history. And I think for what they cost, even if you're not gonna pick one up as a shooter, it's still a really cool thing to have in a collection just because it's unique. And being a gas steel revolver, it's such a cool design for the time. I know they, they did it to really increase the velocity to try to get that bit of extra velocity and to prevent the gases from you know leaking out between the cylinder gap, but I think where this thing is going to be really fun to play with is when we go to suppress one. And we are going to do that. We might even suppress this one. So, all right, I'm going to shoot a couple more shots, guys, and uh, we'll get back to it here. All right, let's do it. Not shooting a bad group there. I mean, I wouldn't want to get in a gunfight with, with, <laughs> with this thing, but uh, I guess if it's the only tool you got, you got to run what you got. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We really appreciate y'all. And uh, definitely want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters, all the folks who purchase man cans, all the folks who purchase t-shirts over on Ballistic Inc. Thank you so much for supporting our channel and allowing us to take on a really cool project such as this one. And uh, guys, I can't say it enough. We really appreciate y'all watching. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. I know this ain't a Glock. I know it's not like a fancy, fast-loading pistol, but it helps you appreciate the technology that we have now and to think that those brave men and women who use this to, to protect their lives, right? You know, <laughs> you had to have a, a lot of courage to carry this thing into combat. And those brave men and women, they certainly did. And they, they did what they needed to do and they did their jobs and they did it well. And kudos to them for having the uh, testicular fortitude to carry this into combat. Guys, thank you very much. We'll see you next time.